this is Memorial Day weekend, and uh, the message today does not reflect Memorial Day, but I've got to take a minute just before we start and say, man, we are indebted with such, um, such a big debt to those who have served our country. And I don't do we have anybody here today that has served in the military? I don't know if we have anyone. We do. Yes, we do. Absolutely. Can we just honor them? Come on, let's give them a standing ovation today. We honor you today. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, 
Everyone according to his way, says the Lord God, repent and turn from all your transgressions so that iniquity will not be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies, says the Lord God. Therefore, turn and live. Ezekiel is grieved by what he is seeing. Compromise, wickedness, disobedience. And so he preaches this powerful, and anybody that's ever been a teacher or a preacher or a pastor, you've had this rise up in you before, and you can vouch for Ezekiel as Ezekiel's looking across the, the people and the land and things that's going on, and he's saying to them, you need to get a new heart. You need to get a new mind. You need to get a new spirit. Why are you going to sit there and let yourself die in those sins? Stop sinning. Repent. Get right. Do right. Start doing good. And Ezekiel is preaching it. Oh, bless you. He's preaching it. He's giving it all he's got. I can't tell you how many times in, in my heart I preach it to myself. Well, are you going to keep doing the same thing? How many times have I thought about somebody? Are you going to sit there and waste the rest of your life and die in your rebelliousness? Ezekiel was given. We'd all sit back and we'd say, that's good preaching. Let them have it. Well, they got found out about church people. As long as you're not preaching about something they're doing, they'll sit back there and say, let them have it. They'll tell you at the church, I was one of the best ones I've ever heard. Get them. Preach about something's concerning them. They just walk, they don't say nothing to you. They just walk out and I'm not coming back. Give it to them. He's saying, your sins are killing you. Change. Get in your life. Get in your heart. Get in your spirit. And then God tells Ezekiel, He says, Ezekiel, they hear you, but they're not going to do it. Because their mouth is saying one thing. Heart is saying another thing. They hear you, but they're not going to do it. See, back in Ezekiel's day, it was much different than sometimes church this day when someone gets fired up like that and says, You need to start doing right. You need to stop doing this. You need to get a new heart. And everybody's, Oh, preach it, preach it, preach it. Standing up, jumping up, down, clapping their hands. We will serve the Lord. And then they go outside the doors and they're like, I can't find sin fast enough. He said, they're hearing you, Ezekiel, but they're not going to do it because they got the same old heart. They got the same old mind. Yeah, I told you to say it. This is what the law does. This is the purpose of it not going to do it. You see, that's the one thing that the law and that message does. It shows us our shortcomings and our need for something outside of us. The cycle continued in the Old Covenant. It was great commands, but no power for change. Great commands, but no power for change. Get a new heart, get a new life. Stop doing what you're doing. Start serving the Lord. We will do it. We will do it. We will do it. Maybe not. We're not going to do it. We're going to do our own thing. Great commands, no power to change. So imagine Ezekiel 
Uh, you think about this, John. Imagine Ezekiel as he has spoken this word from the Lord in verse in chapter 18, because he don't know exactly what God is up to here. And then God takes him down to Ezekiel chapter 36, and then this is what God says to Ezekiel in Ezekiel 36. Tell this to the people, Ezekiel. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you. And you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Now the first thing I'm noticing is that God's word in chapter 18 was saying, You do this, and you do that, and you stop this, and you stop that. And now in Ezekiel 36, God is revealing the new covenant that he's going to bring about. He's showing Ezekiel was one of the prophets that got to see a glimpse of what God was going to do in another day. In another time, Ezekiel was seeing through the future to our time and our day. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness. From all your idols, I will, love oh God says, I will, I will, I will give you a new heart. I will put a new spirit within you. Don't you hear it? At 18, he says, get a new heart. Go get you a new life. And now God says, in this day, I will give you a new heart. I will give you a new spirit. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a new heart. I will put my spirit within you. I will cause you to walk in my statutes. And you will keep my judgments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave your fathers. You shall be my people. I will be your God. I will deliver you from all your uncleannesses. I will call for the grain and multiply to bring no famine upon you. Ezekiel preaching the word of the God. Word of God under the Old Covenant is transferred by the Holy Spirit to our day and our time in the covenant that God has given to His people. To say to us, I'm going to do what you couldn't do for yourself. says this in Psalm 25. You ever heard this? The secret of the Lord is with those who fear Him. And He will show them His covenant. The power transfer is going to take place in your life when you truly understand the covenant God has made. God still directing his people to serve him? Is he still directing his people to live for him? Is he still directing his people to be witnesses and, and to be the people of his kingdom? Is he still? Absolutely. But what God has done is he has done it for us. And he's empowered us to be who we couldn't be on our own. And he's given us a new heart. He's given us a new spirit. He's given us a new life that we didn't deserve, that we couldn't earn, that we failed over and 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 over again and again and again and again. So many times to achieve, and he's given it to us. Maybe they got it yet. That's why the word of the Lord takes us somewhere else. I'm going to take you there. Ezekiel chapter 37. Someone said these dry bones relate to Israel today. I believe the Bible gives clear evidence that these dry bones. Coming alive 
was a very clear representation of the new covenant people of the church of God empowering his people with his Holy Spirit. Let me just start reading. Ezekiel 37, the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass them or pass by them all around and behold, there were very many in the open valley and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, O oh Lord God, you know. In other words, Ezekiel is saying, God, my whole ministry, I've been preaching to bones. I've been telling bones, repent. I've been telling bones, go get a new heart. I've been telling bones, go get a new life. Read into what Ezekiel is saying. God, I've been preaching to bones for my whole ministry. Only you know if anything's ever going to happen. I'm just I'm telling them to do it. They're not doing it. They're saying they'll do it, but it ain't happening. God, you know. He said to me, prophesy to these bones. Say to them, oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones. Get a new heart. Get a new life. Stop doing what you're doing. Start doing right. He says, thus says the Lord God to these bones. Surely I will cause breath. Anybody guess what the breath is? I will cause breath to enter into you. And you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. God has released me in such an awesome way through this passage. Because as a preacher, sometimes you want to say, get some skin on those bones. Get some muscle on those bones. God, why aren't they hearing what you're trying to say to them? And God tells me through this text because they're dead in the grave. That's why. Don't expect much from dead people. But he says, I will cause breath to enter in. I. And then as God says that, people pop into my mind who once were lost. had no ambition to serve God, actually had ambitions to ruin their life and anybody around me. But something happened. At some point there was bread that entered them. And now they desire to be like him. Now they desire. There's there's there, was an old, there were an old dead skeleton in the grave. Now, growth is taking place. Was it because somebody fired them up enough? No. It was because God did what he promised he would do in his new covenant. He placed his bread. This has set you free. If you've got a son or a daughter that's not a believer, they're not serving the Lord or a mom or, or a dad or a co-worker or somehow, and you're thinking, hey, you're never going to change. Why, why is it the good things I do rubbing off on them? The good things you're doing is just making them mad as a hornet, I can tell you right now. You pray for the breath of God. Breathe upon them. You pray that they come to that place that they just simply ask God to come in and watch what the breath of God can do to dry bones. Mm. God help me to never preach just to rattle bones. Because you can preach and you can rattle bones. I could give you 20 minutes of something right now and we'd have bones rattling all over this place but you'd walk out of 
of here and you lose the enthusiasm before you got home. I don't want to rattle bones. I want the breath of God to come into people's lives. I want God to do what He said He would do. I want God to initiate transformation that He said He would do. I want it to be none of me and none of you and none of our efforts to matter or count. I want the presence of Almighty God just to do what He said He would do. He's faithful. Everything He's ever promised has come to pass. We're going to hold Him to that. Then you shall know I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling and the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them over. But there was no breath in them. That tells me, as I read this passage, is that there are people in this place right now, you are living in the new covenant that God has made with you, and yet you are not enjoying the new covenant that God has made for you. He has given you a new covenant. He has signed it and sealed it with His blood. He has sealed it with the Holy Spirit in your life, and yet you still walk through your life riddled with guilt and confusion and fear and doubt and depression and anger and all these kind of things, and yet you are a new covenant believer and God wants you to be, He wants you to be free. He wants you to know who you are in Him. He has stood you up. He has clothed you. You are His army. Then he said to me, Ezekiel said, prophesy to the bread. And that's interesting. Who is the bread? The Holy Spirit. King James probably says the wind, the wind, the bread. Ezekiel was just commanded by the Lord to preach. It's what prophesy. He's saying preach to the Holy Spirit. Think about it. It's a picture of the new covenant. He's saying, preach, prophesy to the breath, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, Our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened up your graves. O my people, and brought you up from your graves. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. Ezekiel, preach to the spirit. Prophesy to the spirit. This is the covenant. God has made a covenant with us, his people, that we have become the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit of God. That's what the Bible says about each and every one of us. It is not this building that he wants to fill. It is this building that he wants to fill. And I declare to you that if you're living that kind of life that's defeated and you're not free and you don't know who you are, I declare to you and I'm going to help you out. We're going to preach to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, this is the covenant of God that you have made with us. Breathe upon your people. Fill the hearts of your people. You are bound to the covenant that God has made with his people. That is faith. That is faith. We want to help the Holy Spirit. If you're going to put anything in one of those blanks you got, write this. The Holy Spirit doesn't need my help. Holy Spirit doesn't need my help. There are 
is a work of the Spirit. It doesn't take away from the work of the cross. The work of the cross is the means by which we've entered into this new covenant. The cross is, is, is the cross has taken away our sins. We have been justified, sanctified, set apart, saved, we've been given eternal life. But there is the work of the Holy Spirit that is also attached to this covenant that God has made with us. And it is a continual work of the Holy Spirit. And we as his people can get up every day and say, all right, Holy Spirit, I'm under covenant. I'm going to need you today. I need you to be who I can be. I need you to say what I can't say. I need you to take every step from me. I need to walk in the freedom and the liberty of the Lord my God. And I'm going to call upon you, Holy Spirit, to breathe upon me afresh today. Why do you think God makes a covenant with us if he doesn't want us to hold on to that covenant? How many of us are holding God to the covenant that he's made with us? I'm afraid that many people don't even understand the covenant God has made with us. I'm afraid that many people are still stuck in Ezekiel chapter 18 and they're wondering why can't I be the person that gets a new heart and gets a new life and gets a new spirit? Why can't I have the strength to say no? You don't need the strength to say no. You just need the faith to say yes.
speaking was written. This is speaking of Jesus as our shepherd. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. By the way, that abolishes anybody who thinks that there's a father on this earth that is a man. There is no man on this earth who is a spiritual father. I'm not your spiritual father. I can't forgive your sins. You don't need to confess your sins to me to get forgiven of your sins. We have one shepherd. He is Jesus. He is the Christ. He is the Messiah. And he's already freely forgiven everyone who's believed in him. He shall feed them. He shall be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David is a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will make a covenant of peace with them. And cause wild beasts to cease from the land. And they dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. You're saying, I'm not getting this. This is what God is saying through the Spirit in this passage as He gave it to me. There is no demonic power that were to take a moment of sleep from the child of God. There is no wicked force or evil presence or person that should ever be able to disturb the peace of the children of God because although we once were a prey, we are a prey no longer. We do not have to fear the enemy or his devices. I've had Christians come, I'm afraid somebody's put a curse on me. That's hog wash. We are praised no longer. You cannot curse the people of God. God we, this is in the Old Testament. God says you can't curse who I'm already blessed. And we are blessed of the Lord. And there's no witch, no warlock, no demon, of course. Nothing's coming out of the television to change my life. We are God's people. We are His property. We are no longer a prey. And we don't have to lose a, a moment of sleep or peace. The doctor said cancer. Guess what? I'm no longer a prey. I got one shepherd. He knows what I got or he knows what I'm dealing with. He knows what's in my body and he's my shepherd. I trust him. Hmm. I will make them in the places all around my hill a blessing. I will cause showers to come down in their season. There shall be showers of blessing. And the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. And the earth shall yield her increase. And shall be safe in their land. God's given us a new land. I know there was prophetic implications of Israel. And the land that God would give. Lord, he's talking to new covenant believers. You remember the old song, Beulah Land, I'm longing for you. Look, God has given us Beulah Land already. We're not the prey anymore. We are His. He took us up out of the miry clay, established our feet, gave us a firm foundation. They shall be safe in their land. Do you feel safe? feel secure. They shall know that I am the Lord. When I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them from the hand of those who enslaved them. <laughs> Jesus said this. They shall no longer be a prey to the nations. Nor shall beasts of the land devour them. They shall dwell safely, and no one shall make them afraid. Amen. My friend. Thank you, Jesus. Can we stand? God is heard. 
words to me in the spirit to speak.
greatness and his awesome power. God, show us the truth of your covenant. For failing to forgive, we'll say shit down. to give for you to I believe in you, Lord. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you, Lord. I trust in you, Lord. I trust in you. I trust in you, Jesus. I believe in you. Everything I have is you. Everything good in me is you, Lord. I can't accomplish anything without you, Jesus. I rest in your finished work. I walk in your awesome power. I live according to your breath, God. The breath of life. It's a breath of hope. It's a breath of peace. It's a breath of power. Thank you, Jesus. Be filled all across this place. Be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Be filled with the power and presence of the Most High God. Be filled. Be filled. Be filled. I speak to the breath of God. Fill your people. Fill you. They are standing, Lord. They are standing. Fill them with the breath of life. Fill them with your presence and power. Fill them, Lord. 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 Jesus, Jesus, 
Jesus. Jesus. When you finally get it, that you're not afraid anymore, and it's, <laughs> it's not because of anything you did. It's in spite of everything you did wrong. You're not afraid anymore because Jesus. Battle's been won, y'all. The battle's been won. It's the it's won. The battle's been won. It's been won. Hallelujah. That makes me happy. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord, in this place today. Did everyone who needed to pray come and pray? Is there anyone here that needs prayer? If you do, just come at this time, and I would be more than happy to pray with you, to agree with you, whatever it may be. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else? Anyone else here in need of prayer? Thank you, Lord. God, someone come and pray. Thank you, Lord.
just raise your hands and just wave the Lord an offering of praise. Come on, let's give him a wave offering. We worship you and honor you, Lord. We worship you. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, if you love him. Hallelujah, I'm God's child. Praise the Lord. I got 